Well, welcome to the 12th uh, film in our small series uh, pattern of the month. And it's, as I said last time, we're gonna tie a spring fly. But I wanted to start with saying a few things about spring flies. Most of the time we think when we're gonna fish deep down that we need our flies to be heavy. I carry, I carry too many flies, <laughs> but I, I carry wallets with BTTs and I carry uh, wallets with TTTs where I have an option to change from the light to the, to the heavy fly. And think about this, we, uh, in the spring when the water is cold we need to go get our fly down to the fish. And it's very very easy to think that you need a weighted fly. And I think it works absolutely the opposite way. Because if you imagine the water is fast on top and the water is slow on the bottom, we need to fish the way where we have our line as heavy as we need to get the fly down to the fish. If we get a, our fly down where the water barely moves and we fish a very weighted fly, it's going to be dead. It's going to be, it's not going to move at all and we're not going to fish very effectively. So, the technique I think, the best technique is to fish a heavy line with a light fly. So, I also carry plastic tubes in the spring and I think the most effective way is to fish a very light BTT uh, or a plastic tube on a short leader on a heavy, heavy line. That way we can get our fly down and we can still have a fly that will move in an attractive way for the fish. It's a little bit to think of. And when it comes to the weighted fly, I prefer to fish the weighted fly on a floater or an intermediate, but where I fish really, really fast water, where I need my fly to go through the, the surface film, maybe cut through the waves, uh, where the uh, river comes in to the pool in the fast top part or to fish in the very fast tail where we don't want our flies, flies to start to, to, to skate. That's where I think the weighted fly is best and that's where I, I use my uh, TTTs the most. Um, the light TTT or the BTT you can fish all through the pool. But now here in the spring to fish deep down slow for the cold fish use the light fly so let's move into the uh, uh, tying room and uh, go behind the vise and I'll show you one of my very best spring flies that I'm gonna tie on plastic to make it very light and very mobile uh, very lively and very effective. So a spring fly, a light fly. Um, I'm going to tie today the Sierra Gorba or Sierra Gorba as it spells, but uh, it's a fly that uh, has its origin from the Alta and from the famous Nesharra pool. And we're going to end this little film clip here with just a little peek on uh, an adventure I had on, on Shara Gorva this last summer. Um, this is our 12th film and um, uh, thank you all for giving us all this good support. And uh, looking through we had a few hundred thousand views which is pretty amazing I think. Um, we're going to do uh, soon... Uh, if you keep an eye on our social medias, we're going to do a little vote on uh, which one, which film you think was the best one for you that gave you probably most value and the best tricks for your own tying. Shara uh, Gorba I'm going to tie today is a fly that uh, actually I had quite a few mails on people saying, can't you please tie Shara Gorba. So we're going to do it today. We're going to do it classic style. 
uh, which means we will have a wing uh, on top uh, that divides the hackles. So the fly I'm going to tie today is going to be a big fly and um, a spring fly. Uh, uh, spring flies we want to have them quite big, quite colorful and with a little bit more volume than we have on summer flies and flies maybe for the fall. I'm going to tie it on a uh, orange medium and a black extra small and uh, use my little cutter here and unfortunately I have to tell you that our cutters and the rest of our tools are a bit delayed. Um, most important is to have the perfect quality and we had to change a couple of small things. So sorry to tease you all these films but uh, they will be soon be here. Okay so I start with the medium and I cut a little edge uh, that is for Oh, that was a bit too long, eh? I think this is a bit too long. How do I judge this? It's the tube should be about half the size or maximum half the size of the ready fly. Uh, I don't like to have um, flies with a long uh, body, so that's why I'm going to take a little bit off here. And come down to proportions and a lot of fly tying, fly tying is a lot about proportions to get the right proportions not only for the fly to look good but for the fly to behave the right way in the water. Today I'm going to tie with the 12-0. I most mostly tie with our own 12-0 thread. I'm going to use a black one and I start by putting in the plastic the extra small into the medium so it goes in well into the medium and then I secure it with some thread and the thing is here that and I told you before it's so much better to do this without glue because here uh, I will keep the flexibility in the tubing and one of the reasons that I think that uh, our fits tubing um, creates stronger flies than a lot of other tubing is that it's more flexible and here what I do I cut away a part and uh, when I put the thread on the medium the thread will pull the medium and hold the extra small quite simple but um, very very handy okay so I move my thread back and I start with Mirage like I do on a lot of uh, my flies and uh, when I use uh, black thread on a fluorescent tubing, I don't work the thread all the way back. I work the mirage back and I uh, turn it, here we go, and go front. And the reason I do this is that uh, I don't want the thread to be seen through the mirage uh, while it get wet. Little trick here when you put the, the tinsel this way and the thread the other way when you're putting the thread it will pull the tinsel so what I do I put some thread on and then I pull this a little bit so I'm sure it will be strong. Cut it off I don't need to cut it off very close and um, those of you who've seen a few of the films know that I, I, I don't have that many tails on my flies. Uh, maybe because today I fish a lot of BTTs and TTTs where I have a loose body and the loose body I need to have, it needs to be round, equal all the way so it can be in any, any position. But today I'm going to put the tail on and I used a lot of... Uh, uh, different materials here and uh, um, those of you following know that we're working with our own material called tail fiber I'm very sorry to say that I'm still not happy with the colors we we have so uh, you will have to wait a little bit for it uh, I, I've used a lot of flora fiber 
Floral fiber is a nice fiber with a really good shine to it, but it's hard to get a good volume. It's a bit too straight. Uh, today I'm going to show you uh, what you could do with regular crafts fur. Crafts fur is actually a super nice material to do tails with. And um, the, I treat it the same way as I do with hair, actually. I don't need to brush it through, but I just untangled it a bit. Make it wide, about half a centimeter, and I put it, put it in. And uh, make sure that I tie it in so it comes down on the sides. Good thing with craft fur is that uh, you can taper it in a good way. I put my scissors in underneath and I pull and, and cut. This way I can uh, decide what taper I want and how long I want it. And uh, you know, it's, it's an easy material to work with. And what's good with crafts fur is also that it keeps its volume well when it gets wet. Uh, really strong fluorescent colors, and which is good for the spring fly that I want here. And um, now I'm gonna do uh, a body. I put on a body and a ribbing, and I'm gonna use two of our uh, own SSS braids. And um, I'm gonna do an Alta Gold, and I'm gonna do the Hot Orange in Flames. And um, one for ribbing, one for body. And I always start by putting in, tying in my ribbing material first. I then do the body material. And it's such a big advantage, I think, to have one material that you can do both things with. I did then take the orange, that's going to be my body, and I tie it in. I make sure I cover up all the thread and I pull it hard. And the good thing with our braid here is that you can overlap it so it... Uh, becomes a tapered body and I do it a little more than half and tie it in underneath okay and then I just cut that off and again I don't have to cut, cut it real close it's better to save a little bit if it starts to move, shouldn't, but when you have 25 salmon on the same fly, the teeth will pull in this uh, braid. The braid will hold, it's, it's extremely uh, durable, but uh, maybe you can, if you're not careful enough with your tying thread, it can start s slipping. Okay, and like all my flies, I try to taper things here, meaning that I start with the bare tubing, put on the mirage, put on the braid, and the fly is growing. And this is also uh, when it comes to uh, looks. It's uh, to get the right proportions and a good looking fly. And I always do um, the front part with uh, dubbing. And I use my on glitz here. Glitz is a really long fiber, 8-10 centimeters, meaning that I can brush it out really really good. And I tie it in and I make sure when I put it in, first of all that I overdress it, because if it looks good when it's not brushed it will look too small uh, or too skinny when I brush it out. Uh, and I work my thre thread back and forth to build up this heavy uh, tapered dubbed body. And you can see glitz is super easy to dub on. I never use wax. Wax melts on about 50 Celsius. 
said it a million times, but it's still true that sooner or later your fly box ends up in your car and on a sunny day it gets too warm and the wax will melt. And uh, if you use wax tying it in, the material won't stay and the wax will also take part of the color with it when it melts. And if you don't believe me, you check a green highlander you have with a yellow back part and the green dubbing and you can see how the green color is, is coming into the yellow floss silk. And um, that's, that's wax leaving. Okay, talking extra much today. Time for a uh, body hackle. And on the Patagorva, which is uh, the original fly really, the Sharagorva is to be a fly with a bit more color to it than Patagorva, but besides that, they're almost the same. On the Patagorva, I use a, a orange dyed badger hackle, silver badger dyed orange. Uh, on uh, the Sharagorva, I use a bright orange one. And um, actually here I have, oh, that was not a good feather. Some of them are a bit broken, broken fibers. I don't like that. Better to be picky. One good fly is better than 10 bad ones. And you can see on this hackle that it's, for a lot of things, really shitty quality. It's extremely stiff, but Tying a big fly like this, it doesn't really matter. It will be a little bit more uh, difficult to tie it in, but uh, I think I will have to use a little more force and a little more thread here to secure this before I cut it. Okay, so doing uh, a body hackle here, what I don't do is that I start winding this back leaving very few fibers here. Uh, on a normal fly, I do one turn here. If I want to have a heavy fly like this, like the spring fly, I can do two turns here before I take my hackle and I work it backwards. On a big fly like this, I prefer to use my fingers. You can use our uh, here we go, that was not really 100% even. Uh, you can use a um, hackle plier too. We were coming out with a heavy one for big hackles and big flies sooner, very soon. Okay, so I take my braid and I spin it. And this is the one of the big advantages with our SSS braid that you can spin it down to any size you prefer. I then cross over the ribbing and on a full body like this, on a big fly, I do the classic five turns. Try to untangle this a little bit. And uh, when I tie it in, I tie it in underneath. And the reason I tie in underneath is that on top, I'm going to have a wing and I'm going to tie in a lot of stuff. Here we go. Come on up. It's hard for me to see here. There you go. Getting bloody old too. Okay. If I cut this off here now, uh, there's always a risk that the braid will slip. So what I do is I take this and I fold it back and I secure it back. And here I can do some extra turns uh, of thread too, and then I cut it. This is going to be really, really strong. I then take our brush. You say this is the meanest brush there is, and I just give this body hell like this. Brush out the fibers. Done it right, you will hold this pretty rough treatment. 
So the body is ready. A little bit of coffee. I can show you our cups and our stuff that we do uh, to help protect salmon. What you can do is support us by or support salmon by buying this stuff. We give away money on all our Fight for the Wild Salmon products to uh, three organizations. It's uh, the Baltic Salmon, um, the Stiftelsen for the Baltic Salmon, uh, and then uh, um, NASF Iceland, and also Red Villaxen, which is uh, North Atlantic Salmon Fund's part in Norway. So uh, it's good uh, to try to help organizations that are really important. The Baltic Baltic Salmon Fund, sorry, I, I lost the words there. Okay, wing. So I'm gonna start now uh, doing this a bit more colorful than the Patagorva. And uh, what I do, I start with, um, with Angel Hair uh, HD. I can use flash too, but I do the Angel Hair HD uh, in hot orange and flames color. And I take quite a bit and I tie it in flat on top, one or two turns and fold it back. It's a bit messy when you take this much, but uh, here we go. Fold it back and tie it in again. One didn't want to follow. The important thing here is that when you fold it back and tie it in, that you actually put your finger on top like this to press it down and make sure that it's tied in very wide like this. Never do this. If you tie, if you cut off, so uh, all the fibers get the same length, they will come together in the water and the fly won't move as good and the flash won't move. So cut, pull and taper. If there's one or two too long, you can, um, you can take them away afterwards. Okay, so now it's time for what will be the main wing. And I'm gonna do it uh, bright orange and I make sure it's uh, quite heavy wing. Um, the first part of this wing should be at least 60 or uh, preferably 70% of the, the whole wing. I do like this and then I take my brush and I brush it through and the thing is I take away some of these uh, very soft short fibers but I also untangle it which means it's a lot easier to have this um, tie this in flat in the right way where the fibers are not crossing all over all the time okay so first wing not too long this is going to be a big fly so i can have this going a little bit behind the tail like this and i tie it in and I tie it in now on top of the medium, not on the extra small. I move my fingers back and I make sure that this is now tied in like an airplane wing like this, super wide, because the fish perspective, what's happening here, they won't see, they will see what's happening in this perspective. So I tie it in super wide, sometimes uh, my thread will pull down some of the fibers on the other side and I just have to pick them up a little bit. I want the wing to be on top of the, of the fly or on the upper half of the fly because if it's uh, down around the fly will lose its balance. Cutting up, cleaning up, try to clean up between everything you do. Uh, you can see I have a couple of long ones. I don't want this, but I can take them away afterwards. It's easier. Okay, and now I do same color, but with angel hair, which is the thinner one. And you can see that we have these very, very strong fluorescent uh, 
fibers in our hot colors hot orange in flames and the green one hot greenlander and the hot magma yellow got these extremely hot fluorescent fibers and i do the same make sure it's white and tie it in cotton taper pull and taper so i get different length of these fibers okay so <clears throat> now i'm gonna do uh, the second part of the wing which is batagorba brown color um, when i do this um, it's called pussy style where i have a hackle where i end up with a hackle that's wound uh round one hackle in uh, in front of the wing i put on all the wing now but now i'm going to do this the classic way where i have a half turbo cone and the wing will have to divide the hackles so what i do here i take one part of this wing now which would be probably 75% or so uh, of the whole brown part and this should be a bright fly so I'm not putting in a lot here not too much I want this to make sure it tapers before you cut tie it in put it down spread it out look at the length and again tie it in on top of the medium the medium tubing don't walk your thread down on the extra small yet and look at it so it's even and it's spread all over the orange can have a little bit of orange coming down a little trick here is i take this and i pull it back like this before i cut it off Okay, so this is as far as I go with the wing before I'm gonna tie in the rest of the hackle. And before I do that, I put a little bit of super glue uh, right on the place where I tie this in here. Just a little bit, make sure that it secures the wing all the way to the sides too. Uh, I don't have to be afraid of, of super glue sucking into the wing as long as I don't, too, don't take too much. But okay, hackle. On a lot of uh, these big flies, I use ostrich. And ostrich is a fantastic material. I would say on big Sierra Gorgas like this, on most of them, I use ostrich actually. I tie it in on the tip and I'll wind it on like a regular hackle. I also use very big soft hackle feathers. But today I'm gonna just yes, show you, I'm gonna tie with the schlappen. Schlappen, these are, these are on a strong string here, but these are really big, soft cock hackle feathers. And they're pretty good actually. Uh, what they do, I have one here, what they do is that they give a bit more volume to the fly than a regular soft tackle will do. Uh, ostrich gives a lot of volume and, uh, and, and also are, they are very, very um, soft, swim in a good way. If you don't have them, we have our packs. We've got some black ones in there too. Uh, been pretty popular actually we uh, will come with a few more uh, feather packs uh, also in the future but uh, those of you who follow us uh, on our social medias will see that okay so i look at this and i want don't want to take away all of the soft part of this uh, slap and i will have some of these fibers that are soft that will uh, give uh, quite a bit of uh, volume but i also want to keep the soft part it's a little broken here i will just have to pull this apart and repair it here it's ok 
okay fibers on this i think it will look okay and i cut it off create that little triangle that i'm tying in and again i use underneath of the uh of the fly uh, of the tube to tie in the hackles then i take my thread and i move it down to the extra small this is the last thing i'm gonna put on here uh, on the medium then i double this back make sure i get uh, all on the right place there there are some orange fibers here wants to go wrong way okay one or two it doesn't matter but then i hold back so i tie in all the fibers coming one side this way uh, i get a uh, natural good uh, form to this and you see maybe I picked a little too much here I'm gonna do one or two more turns on a big fly it doesn't really matter if you have one extra turn of hackle I think I had uh, here we go use this untangle this a bit and the last one and now I'm down on the extra small and I tie it in and everything I tie in here now needs to be tied in really really short because uh, the space on the half turbo is quite narrow so I need to be careful and don't move the thread too much uh, side weights. Cut it off, divide this a little bit, untangle it a bit, so I get a nice little hackle here. See how it looks on your side too. There we go. <clears throat> I then take the last part of the wing. Very, very few fibers, a bit longer than the others, so I can keep my tapering. Do the same, untangle this, make sure this should also be your best hair, the softest, to be put in on top, longer like that, does it look good? I think it looks good, this is barely long enough, but I think I can do it, tie it in, make sure I don't pull it down on the side too much and it looks good I do the same here I take this and I pull it up a bit and what I do is also I take the tying thread and I pack it a little bit meaning I get a shorter part here which is really important when I should cover all this up okay does it look good from your side? Looks good from my side for sure. Okay, very good. So I now I pimp this with a bit of angel hair. I use uh, the nasty rusty color. I actually made this color to uh, go together with peacock and uh, especially with uh, the brown patagorba wing. One more fiber there. Make sure they're wide and make sure all your thread is put on top like this. So you don't uh, work your thread to the front too much. It's one big, uh, big um, thing you can do wrong actually. When I do fly time classes, one thing you turn the fly and you can see how the thread's been moving to the front to every material you tie in. Try to tie like this it's a lot better okay so uh, I'm gonna do peacock and uh, you can do uh, dyed peacock or you can do natural ones doesn't really matter on this fly actually uh, in our pattern packs that we send out this time we're gonna do you natural ones we've been sending out uh, dyed feathers and uh, 
uh, see I don't want these to tangle I want them to be not um, crossing over each other when I try to tie them in these were a bit tricky but I formed them like this uh, and I just make sure they're long enough to go to the end of the wing and I try to tie in all four at the same time and it's like a 50-50 sometimes one or two will turn switch and I just pull it out and tie it in again it's an extra second or so looking good for me I don't like this guy here little angel hair little angel hair here we can do that afterwards but then I take this and I do the same I pull this up before I cut it I think I talk too much all the time but uh, you've been nice enough <laughs> thanking me for sharing my thoughts <laughs> sometimes they're good maybe sometimes it's a bit too much okay so jungle cocks and I uh, uh, you know I like I love those feathers uh, but I also love our the wild and our our animals that live in it and uh, I'll try to uh, do things right Saving our wild salmon. We need to save the wild birds. Never go without the certificate. Always use that if you want to use the, uh, the natural feather. Uh, we are working with our substitute. I think, I have to be careful now, I'm a bit optimistic, but I think you will have it in August. They said April to me, so I tell you August. I've been fooling you with these tools, so. Okay, look at this, curving the wrong way. I pulled it over my fingernail to curve it the way I want it. I want it to follow the wing. And I want it to curve like this too. I hate jungle cocks standing out like this. They should follow the wing like this, okay? And I always start with the one on my side here. About the same length as uh, the tubing. I had people tell me that one of the differences be with uh, my tying to a lot of other good tires is that I use longer jungle cocks and smaller feathers. And um, just because I like it that way of course, also the bigger the feather is and the shorter you tie it in, the more it will will uh, make the wing, uh, stop the wing from swimming and moving. Uh, so smaller is better here. Okay, normally I turn this, I can't do it now. I will just have to look from above and see so I get the same length before I tie it in. Slipping down a little bit. Maybe I have to pull it up. Well, I will let it go and have a look. Does it look good? Not really. I'll just adjust it a little bit by moving my nail over it. And one or two more turns. Pull that out. Cut it off. Okay, my side is beautiful. Maybe you should come over here. Um, now it's time to put the cone on. And if I've done it right now, I won't have a problem. And uh, on this big fly, I'm gonna put on a, a half turbo of what we call small, which is maybe a bit crazy because it's the biggest we have. But um, uh, we used to, when I started do, doing the turbos, we had the different sizes, bigger sizes. So that's why uh, these are now the small ones, even though it's the biggest we sell. 
This fly I tie either with copper or with a uh, metallic orange. I'm going to do the metallic orange on this one and I tie it, put it on and then I use a little bit of glue here. Now I have to be careful and uh, you've seen how I use support. I put support before, oh, that was too much, careful, before I put it in. So I'm sure I don't mess up things with, with the super glue. I don't want my hackles to have super glue in it. And then I can just take this and I can feel that it's already glued. Take it away, take the cone and press it down tight. And you can see how the glue comes up a little bit here, meaning this will help holding this in the right position. Ready, take the fly out of the vise and pull back the material. Use support with my fingers and cut this off about three mil. Up, oh, not like this. Things wanna go that way. Thank Newton for telling us. And then I just, oops. I just do the careful down so I get the plastic down to the edge on the cone. And now I can look on your side. Looks good, your side too. You can see mine was good. I take the fly and I put it in my hand like this and I look where I have, if I have some of the very long angel hair strands, they have a tendency to start mixing and tangling with my hook. So that's why I tried to take them away. Okay, Sierra Gorva. And you can see how the wing is tapered. It's quite a bulky fly with a lot of material. Uh, the half turbo cone or the cone is what decides uh, what profile I'm gonna get. If it's gonna be the bigger the cone, the fatter the profile. A uh, half turbo cone gives a little slimmer profile than the same size of turbo cone. Um, I like this. Turned out good. Gonna fish it. It's spring. We are soon having here in Scandinavia, we soon have our first uh, fresh salmon running our rivers in um, Great Britain, Scotland. They're running all the way right now and uh, first fish being caught since long. So I hope you like this fly. Uh, I like it a lot. I fish the Shara Gorva when there is a little more color to the water than uh, when I fish my Patagorva. Um, both Alta flies and um, we're gonna end this little film with uh, a little clip, a little tease maybe from the films that are coming soon uh, of our summer adventures. Uh, there are quite a few films coming. There's a few from Iceland and a couple from the Alta. Um, and uh, we're going to end this with a little clip from Sierra Gorva, from <laughs> near Sierra, where the Sierra Gorva was born on the Alta. So thank you for watching. Uh, keep your eyes on our social medias and uh, you will see uh, when the films are coming, but you will uh, also see next film coming up and all the new stuff coming. I was going to show you something. Yeah, of course, uh, we do, uh, again, packs, of course. We do the material pack and the fly pack of the Sierra Gorva. Uh, and thank you all for, for uh, subscribing to this. I didn't know that we would have that many subscribers. It's a bit cheaper uh, for you and uh, gives us a bit more time to plan things and to source materials. So, Chera Gorba, hope you liked it. Thank you very much again for watching and uh, next 
month we're gonna tie another spring fly but it's gonna be uh, uh, tied in a totally different way uh, and uh, with some different ideas on to do how to do the best possible fishing fly so thank you <laughs>